All right, good evening. My name is Hunter, and this is content review for general chemistry students. Uh, today, we're going over nuclear chemistry. So what you'll need today to solve these problems is simply your periodic table, and you'll need to review things like beta decay, positron emissions, um, alpha decay. And we're going to go through some of these problems and talk about how to solve them. So first, we are writing the following isotopes in nuclide notation. And they're given, we're given the example of carbon-14. And what you need to remember about this is you, you of course, have your, your alpha identifier here of your uh, alphabet identifier, <laughs> not different from alpha decay, for your, in this case, carbon. And then up top, you have the mass number. Now, this is different from what the average mass for this element is in nature, and that is what makes it a radioactive isotope. It's unstable. Um, and then you have the number of protons. This is the atomic number. This number remains the same no matter what the isotope is. The number of protons determines the identity of the element. So that will always be the same. So for oxygen, let's go ahead and Make sure we know what we're looking at here. Um, the identifier for oxygen is still O, right? And we're given oxygen 14. 14 is the mass number. Now you can pull up your periodic table. I have ptable.com pulled up, which I like very much. And you can see that oxygen is number eight on the periodic table, and it has an average mass of 16. So this is a radioactive isotope, excuse me, yes, um, topic number of eight. So just to color code this so that it looks the same, 14, atomic number of eight. So that's our first one. Um, this is nuclide notation. So for B, we've got copper 70. Copper is Cu, 70 is our mass number on the periodic table. Our atomic number is 29. Same thing, tantalum 175, we've got Ta. Make sure you check your periodic table and look at this. 175 is our mass number and 73 is our atomic number. Finally, we've got francium 217. This is FR217, check the periodic table, and that is an atomic number of 87. This notation gives us, again in green I've highlighted the atomic mass, which is protons plus neutrons, and then the atomic number is the number of protons. And so we always have N plus P, neutrons plus protons up top, and we have the number of protons on the bottom. So if we ever needed to know the number of neutrons, hint, hint, wink, wink, it's simply that top number minus the bottom number. So which of the following nuclei lie within the band of stability shown in figure 21.2? And I have dragged that in here. I've also written down a couple of um, reminders here that will help you solve these problems. Magic numbers are numbers of protons and neutrons that will always be stable. And so if we're, I think it's numbers of neutrons only. Um, yes, numbers of neutrons uh, that will always be stable. And so if you recognize these numbers, uh, then you can just, quickly say, yes, it will be stable. All isotopes with more than 83 protons are unstable. So that also is a simplifying uh, factor that you can memorize. So let's look at our first one. We have, what was it, chlorine, I believe, 37. And chlorine has an atomic number of 17. 
So we got to do some math really quick. 37 minus 17 gives us 20, and that is the number of neutrons. Because remember, 17 was the number of protons. And 37 was neutrons plus protons. So 20 neutrons. 20 neutrons happens to be one of these magic numbers. And so we can say without any more analysis that yes, this is stable. For the sake of taking a peek at this chart, we have number of protons and number of neutrons. So number of neutrons was 20 and number of protons was 17, which would put us in that band right there. Just to confirm, yes, it's non-radioactive. It is stable. Yes, it is stable. Uh, for B, we have calcium 40. Checking our periodic table. Calcium is the 20th element on the periodic table. 40 minus 20 is 20. So we have 20 neutrons. This is also a magic number. Yes, it's stable. C, we had Bi was bismuth. All right. Yes. Bismuth, 204, with an atomic number of 83. 204 minus 83 is 121. This is not a magic number. Uh, and if we look at our other rule here, um, all isotopes with more than 83 protons are unstable, but this is right at that cusp. We have exactly 83 protons. So we do have to actually go and look. So we find 121 neutrons. And where does that intersect with 83? So there's 80. So 83 would be somewhere over here. I'm going to go ahead and say that that's outside of the band of stability. And this is not stable. It's close, but it's not stable. For D, it was iron 56. Iron is the 26th element on the periodic table. 56 minus 26 is 30. And we have 30 neutrons. We have 26 protons. Um, this one is stable. And finally, we have lead plumbum. 206, 82. Plumbum is the Latin uh, for plumbing, uh, which used to be made out of lead pipes. 206 minus 82 is 124. Is it a magic number? No. It, do we have greater than 83 protons? No. So we do just have to look at it. Please don't do that. I guess I can just pull it down. 124 is there-ish, and 82 is there-ish. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And we've got some more here that you guys can do on your own, but that is the gist of number nine. Let's move on to nuclear equations. So complete each of the following equations. So to solve these, we it's like any other chemical equation. We just need to look at what's on the reactant side and the product side, the left and the right and figure out what's missing um, and balance it. So for this first one, I'm actually going to, eh, I'll just trace. So we have lithium-7 
7 is our atomic number, plus what? We'll just say x equals 2 times 4 would be 8. So to solve this, I yeah, let's rewrite this. You're basically creating an algebraic equation for the top numbers and then a separate algebraic equation for the bottom numbers. Um, so 7 plus x equals 2 times 4 equals 8. So 7 plus 1 equals 8. So x equals 1. Um, Yes, I'm going to do this in a different color. Lithium 3 plus y equals 2 times 2 is 4. So 3 plus y, y equals 1. And this lower number, remember, is the number of protons. So that determines the identity of the particle. So this has to be hydrogen. That goes right there. That goes right here. Go away. And that's your answer. You could also write a proton. So giving ourselves a little more space here, let's do B. Uh, computer magic. Let's do the same thing. So we have carbon 14 equals nitrogen 14 plus what? Um, X here is going to equal zero. It's 14 and 14 doesn't change. We have six protons for carbon and seven protons for nitrogen. So Y here equals one. Excuse me, negative one. Yeah, the, the way that I have this written is um, subtracting seven from both sides. So six minus seven equals y. So y equals negative one. Notating it this way is important um, because then we end up with an element with a mass of zero and a charge of negative one. And that is, of course, an electron. So you could write that as E naught or E negative or electron or a beta particle. So this is beta decay. All right, now we have aluminum 27 plus helium 4 equals what plus a neutron? We have 27 plus 4 equals x plus 1. Run the math, x equals 30. And then we have 13 plus two protons on the left side equals y plus zero on the right side y equals we have 15. so our element has 15 protons that's its identity looking at our periodic table that is phosphorus so phosphorus 30 is the isotope and that happens to be very close, not quite, very close to the average atomic mass found in nature, which is 30.97. So this would be a light isotope. All right, last one. What is CM? 
96. Cerium. So cerium 250 equals, excuse me, yeah, x plus 98 plus 4 times 1 is 4. x equals 148. And then check our protons. 96 protons for cerium equals y plus 38 plus 4 times 0 is 0. So y equals 58. Those together, 58 gives us our identity, which is cerium, C-E, 148. So this would be heady, heavy cerium. Heavy, having extra neutrons. And that is your answer. Mm, yes. Yes. OK. So now we have a bit of a word, word problem. And the simplest way, well, not the simplest way, but the way to do this is to read through and identify where your start and end points are for each step. Um, and spoiler alert, we can break this one down into four steps. So technetium 99 is prepared from molybdenum 98. Molybdenum 98 combines with a neutron. So this is our start point. And I'm going to just note that with a one. Molybdenum 98 combines with a neutron to give molybdenum 99, an unstable isotope that emits a beta particle. That looks like step two to yield an excited form of technetium 99 represented as TC 99 naught. This excited nucleus relaxes, so this is the third step. This excited nucleus relaxes to the ground state, represented as TC99 without the star now, by emitting a gamma ray. The ground state of techni uh, yeah, technetium 99 then emits a beta particle. Write the equations for each of these nuclear reactions. So we're going to have to figure out what the product is for that last step. We're not given it. But we are given our starting point, and that is molybdenum 98. So step one, molybdenum 98. We have to check the periodic table. It has 42 protons. Combines with a neutron. We know that a neutron has a mass of 1, has no protons. And that becomes... Uh, molybdenum 99. Number of protons stays the same. This is an unstable isotope. So next two, next step, step two, I'm just going to rewrite our starting point here, molybdenum 99. Our unstable isotope emits a beta particle. So our beta particle, remember, is basically an electron. So it's, we're, we're Mixing a proton, basically. It has no mass. And so now, even without checking what our product is, we know that it has a mass of 99, and it's going to have 43 protons. I said mixing a proton earlier, but I meant getting rid of an electron, capturing a proton, capturing a proton. And that is technetium 99 naught. They have told us this. All right, so that gives us our starting point for step three. TC 99, 43, star. Um, this excited nucleus, represented by the star, relaxes to the ground state. Written as such, 
uh, by emitting a gamma ray. And that Y is the gamma. So there's our gamma ray. Um, this has no mass, no protons. There's our gamma ray. This was our beta particle or electron in the previous step. All right, we're on to step four. Finally, technetium-99 then emits a beta particle. So we've already seen this one. Get rid of a beta particle. Mass doesn't change, but we effectively gain a proton. Um, we need to go and look what has 44 protons on the periodic table. And that is going to be ruthenium, RU. And that is our final product. This is our last two problems. The first one here is a multiple choice question. So you have a, a one in three chance of getting it right, if you're not sure. Um, positron emission is our key <laughs> keyword here. You just have to know what that means. And we, what you need to know to figure out which nuclei is most likely to decay by positron emission is to find which one has a neutron to proton ratio that is the lowest. So we have to do basically what we've been doing, figure out how many protons and neutrons each of these species has, and then figure out which, uh, which has the, the lowest ratio. So um, let's start with chromium. 58 is our mass number. Chromium has 24 protons. Manganese, and N. Yeah, MN has 25 protons, mass of 51. And iron has. They tell us 59 and 26. So 58 minus 24 is 34. 51 minus 25 is 26. This is our neutrons now that we're solving for. And 59 minus 26 equals 33 neutrons. So to figure out our ratio, um, we simply divide neutrons by protons. So for chromium, we have 34 divided by 24, and that's going to give us about 1.208. For manganese, we've got 26 divided by 25 neutrons by protons, and that gives us 1.04. And here we have for iron, 33 by 26 is 1.27. The lowest ratio is for manganese. So manganese 51 is most likely to decay by positron emission. And that is your answer. And our last exercise for the day. The following nuclei do not lie in the band of stability. How? Would they be expected to decay? I'm going to give us some reminders here, some review, hopefully. If your N and P ratio, neutrons to protons ratio, is high, you're going to emit a beta particle, so beta emission. If your ratio is low, this is positron emission or 
electron capture. And finally, let's throw back here to an earlier problem. If your atomic number, that is your number of protons, is greater than 83, that is going to be an alpha emission. We have 34 and the normal atomic mass of 5.39. Look and say that the ratio of protons to neutrons higher than it would otherwise be is going to be. This is going to emit a beta. Next up, we have uranium 239. So this is going to be. It has a. It has a very. Calcium 30. Excuse me. Looking at catalytic table, average atomic mass for calcium 40. So is so our and there this pop is an ocean. So here we have heavy one proton and one neutron. Um, this is going to be is plutonium uh, 240. We don't even need to look at a or in alpha particle. Okay. Notation. Um, so I know these know how we've used things like deuterium and other track the movement of atoms. Um, they're really using, throwing it up of hard sciences as a career for that. So you know these. This turn out to do. I will be here. Seems um, I can, uh, and there is no way. Uh, useful content.